I want you to know how much I enjoyed meeting you through our pre-class and the conversations that I've had with you since then. Those short interactions were enough to impress me deeply with how thoughtful you are. Thoughtful both in the sense of thinking hard about things and in the sense of caring for others. And I want to thank you for spending your summer caring for Buffalo, the place where you can find, as did the former high roader who took this picture, the word care painted on a wall by a street artist. In fact, my theme today is care. My hypothesis is that if we want to keep the earth habitable, and if we want to preserve and improve democracy in the United States, we need to elevate the value of care in our ethics, culture, and politics. I'd like to start with an elegy I wrote for our beloved colleague, Lorna Hill, who cared with fiery passion for art, justice, and her adopted hometown of Buffalo. It's based on the ancient symbol of renewal, the phoenix. The Firebird for Lorna Hill. The stage is empty and dark. The audience grieves. But slowly, the words they share summon up a soul as if out of cold coal and ash rose a fiery bird with flashing wings. She takes to the air, shakes shiny plumes, and sings. Now for a few words about the concept of care. It has many dimensions, including paying close attention, looking at things carefully, as when we look at great works of art, valuing certain things, caring about them, as we care about basic values, such as peace, love, justice, and equality. Taking care of people and nature, being kind to them, protecting them from harm, is when we care for our farms, our gardens, and our youth. Doing things carefully, with regard for truth and excellence, is when actors work carefully to make their artistry ring true. Care is not easy. The word care is derived from words for greed, lament, and sickbed. If you care, you will have cares. You will not be carefree. If you care for someone, you worry about them getting sick or hurt. If you care about equality, it pains you to see inequality. But care is inextricable from love, joy, wonder, and everything that makes life good. Unfortunately, some of the most powerful streams in our culture have radically devalued care. Patriarchy demeans care by both essentializing it as female and portraying it as less important than quote unquote real work. This puts women in a double bind. They are disproportionately confined to caregiving and punished for seeking success in other roles. At the same time, the caregiving they do is underpaid in the marketplace and underappreciated in the home. Capitalism devalues the unpaid care done by family, friends, and neighbors. At the same time, it commodifies care and strips it of spiritual components. Think, for example, of some for-profit nursing homes where residents are profit centers and staff are disposable tools. A for-profit corporation has the legal duty to maximize profit for its shareholders, even if that means harm to people and planet. Free market ideology destroys various commons or communal resources in the name of private property and assumes that a godlike invisible hand will somehow take care of public welfare as each person pursues his own self-interest. Individualism atomizes people into isolated monads rather than viewing them as parts of communities. It valorizes individual achievement over the public good and urges people to maximize self-sufficiency rather than interdependence. Think of the phrase, a man's home is his castle. Otherisms, such as racism, heterosexism, nationalism, and ableism, degrade care by limiting it to certain groups. By painting other groups as inferior, 
the members of the in-group enhance their own power and free themselves from the responsibility of caring about those they view as other. Anthropocentrism is a kind of otherism toward nature. It instructs us to care only for our own species. It distorts the truth by minimizing the things we share with other species and the ways in which we depend on them. What would happen if we resisted these powerful trends and assigned more value to care? Let's start with the world of work. We would do things like placing more value on unpaid care by expanding paid caregiver leave and sick leave. We would enhance the pay and job quality for people working in the caring professions, such as home health aides. We would expect businesses to operate by the same values as individuals in exchange for the limited liability and all the other advantages we grant them. We would require them to care for people and planet as well as profits. We would phase out for-profit corporations, replacing them with benefit corporations, cooperatives, nonprofits, and other structures more accountable to the public good, like Buffalo's Bread Hive Bakery, a worker-owned co-op, or its West Side Bazaar, a nonprofit incubator. We would reimagine neighborhoods as caring or beloved communities to be judged by how well their neighbors care for each other and for outsiders. We have many models to start from, such as a community land trust in which residents come together to decide the fate of their neighborhood based on commonly held values, not profit. Picture a high school if we saw its primary mission not to produce graduates like a factory, but to care for its youth. Again, we have many seeds to start with. Say Yes Buffalo has the Boys and Young Men of Color Initiative, where students get mentoring and hands-on involvement in public policy. What if programs like this reached every high school student? If we cared enough, we would make it happen. Caring is like most other valuable human activities. It takes effort and patience and practice, as well as inclination. It includes habits that can be developed and skills that can be taught. Most people love babies, but caring for them requires work that can be grueling. The arts are one way to learn to pay careful attention and to care for people and places. Poets care for words. Novelists care for characters. Painters care for the visual world. Dancers care for movement. To succeed, their work must be infused with attention and love. To appreciate it fully, we must replicate that care. As we expand the circles of people we care about, nothing helps like spending time with a wide variety of them. Researchers on implicit bias, for example, have shown that learning about bias is much more effective if it includes interacting with people in the groups you are biased against. Similarly, as we learn to care for nature, there's no substitute for spending time outdoors. An easy way to start is learning a few facts about the natural phenomena you experience every day, things like trees, flowers, and birds. Every January, I eagerly await the first day I hear the simple two-note mating song of the chickadee, the first bird to start its annual courting rituals. These tough birds think it's spring already, even if it is one of the coldest days of the year. Impatiently, they seek the chance to care for each other and new chicks. We need more than the individual cultivation of care, however. We need a politics of care. If you care about other humans and nature, you must enter the world of politics where our mutual fate is decided. To be caring does not mean to turn your back on power. It means to cultivate the power of care and to organize power on behalf of care. In this time of climate emergency, care must become profoundly radical. Care demands that we ring a loud alarm bell to say, if we care for each other, the next generation, and the natural world, we must immediately transform our economy. In this time of vicious inequality and rampant otherism, care demands that we march together through the streets demanding justice, demanding that our government care for all people, and not just the donors and base of the party in power. 
demanding that police officers care for their communities instead of making war against them. That more officers be like Carrie O'Horn, who sacrificed her job when she saved a man from assault by a fellow officer. Today, care is smoldering in the ashes and the destruction we have perpetrated against each other and the web of nature. It will take all of us laboring and agitating together as hard as we can to reignite the coals, fan the fires, and help it rise again like a firebird, a beautiful phoenix. My very best wishes to you all as you continue to march down the high road with your new friends in Buffalo and with each other. Thank you.